Example 7.3. The city of Garden Ridge, Florida has received two designs for a new wing to the municipal hospital. The costs and benefits are the same in most categories, but the city financial manager decided that the following estimates should be considered to determine which design to recommend at the city council meeting next week. Then we have a table with design 1, design 2. The patient benefit is an estimate of the amount paid by an insurance carrier, not the patient, to occupy a hospital room with the features included in the design of each room. The discount rate is 5% per year and the life of the addition is estimated at 30 years. Use conventional BC ratio analysis to select design 1 or design 2. Okay, so for the benefit cost analysis, we will be using annual worth. So basically we will revisit chapter 5 and we will be converting everything, all of our cash flows to annual. Okay, so we will be uh, distributing them equally amongst every year. Okay, this analysis is a little bit similar to what we covered in chapter 6 but take into consideration that these are public projects so therefore there will be no revenue. On the other hand, instead of revenue, we will have something called benefits. Okay, so we can have benefits or disbenefits. Okay, so you may look at the previous slides to uh, explain the difference between the two. But also, we may have usage cost estimates or direct benefit estimates. We will be focusing on this scenario right here for the course. So when we are given our cash flows, you will have the benefits stated. If that's the case, you will compare do nothing first and then you will compare the alternatives amongst each other. Just like chapter six, it will, they will be compared in pairs. Okay, but if you have the benefits stated or given, then DN will go first. It says here like the revenue alternatives in the rate of return analysis because in this case we don't have revenue but the benefits could be seen as similar to a revenue. Okay, we al also have the scenario for usage cost. In this case the benefits are not stated in the problem but they are implied. Uh, in this case you do not need to compare do nothing. You just compare the alternatives against each other just like the cost alternatives. And we will see a short example on how um, the usage cost estimates would look like in a problem. Okay, but we will be focusing on the direct benefit. Okay, so here we must follow a, a series of steps. Okay, so first of all, we will determine the equivalent values for costs, benefits, and disbenefits. You won't have disbenefits all the time. In the problem, this one, Let's see what we have. Uh, first of all, we have the construction cost. Okay, so this is where they're barely building uh, the new wing. So therefore, this would be our P. Then you have a building maintenance. This is per year. We can say that this is a maintenance cost. And then notice here that the benefits are stated. So, they're given benefits. And well also the benefits are per year, so we will be, oops, we will be treating these benefits as, as A's as well. So this is another A right here. But, uh, here, well, I can just say that we have direct benefits. which is this scenario right here. Okay, so we have the benefits already estimated for each alternative. That means that we need to consider the do nothing. Okay, so uh, let's use a conventional benefit cost ra ratio analysis. So in step number one of that slide, 
it says to, well, let me put this in red. Okay, so step number one, determine equivalent values. Okay, so again, we need to convert everything to A. It says right here that it's for 30 years. So let me just uh, point that out. We have the rate. It's going to be 5% per year. And then we're going to have lives of 30 years for both of them because we need to have equal lives. But anyways, we're converting everything to A, so they will be distributed equally. Okay, so first of all, we need to get the annual worth. Let's go with the construction cost, but we need the annual worth of construction cost. Okay, so this is uh, design one and design two. Okay, so for uh, oh, let me do this in a kind of like a table form. Okay, so if we want to uh, convert the ten million. to annual it's going to be find a given p at 5% for 30 years okay so this would be equal to $650,000 and this is a cost remember although here they gave everything all of the cash flows uh, as positive okay but you know that if it's a cost it will be negative okay so actually let me Add the negative sign there. Okay, now for design two, we need to convert the 15 million. Find a given P at 5%, 30. This will give us minus 975,750. Okay, so we have the annual worth of the construction cost. Then we need the annual worth of maintenance. Okay, but it's, it all already says per year, so it doesn't need any conversion factor here. So it's also a cost, so it'd be minus 35,000 and minus 55,000. Uh, then we need the annual worth of the benefits. Okay, which are going to be, the benefits would be positive. So it's already per year again. So this would be 800,000 and 1,050,000. Okay. So we're going to have the equivalent values. Let's see what's next. We need to order the alternatives by increasing total equivalent cost. In chapter six, we only order them by increasing initial cost, but here we must take into consideration all of the costs that we have. Okay? Uh, and also says that for direct benefit alternatives to add the do nothing first. Okay, so in this case, we have the direct benefits. So here, I'm going to put uh, include do nothing. Okay, so step number two, order alternatives. By increasing total equivalent cost. Okay, so it's total cost in this case. Okay, so we must include the do nothing. The do nothing would have no additional cost. Then D1 or design one 
Okay, so the total cost would be the construction and the maintenance. But we already have them in A, so we can just add them up. So in this case would be the minus 650,000 minus 35,000. Okay, so in this case we would have a minus 685,500. For design number two, same thing, we have the cost of construction and the cost of maintenance. So it would be minus 975,750 uh, minus 55,000, giving us a total of minus 1,000,000. 30,750. Okay, so the order would be do nothing, then design one, and then design two. Uh, here, just uh, for your reference, I'm going to put that for the total equivalent cost, we are doing construction. plus maintenance cost. Okay, but you would add any other cost. So if you have an operation cost, uh, etc., you would add it here. So any cost would be added in step number two. Okay, so after step number two, it says for each pair, so then again, this is where we start with our pairs, um, two and one determine the incremental B and C. So we need the benefits and we need the costs. Okay, so in this case, as this is an Im implied one, okay, we're gonna do the benefits of the second alternative minus the benefits of the first one, then the cost of the second alternative minus the cost of the first one. Okay, in this case, we're not using the usage cost alternatives Okay, but if that was the case, uh, the equation, instead of using benefits, because remember, they're not given uh, in this scenario, you would you do the usage cost for the second one minus the usage cost of the first one. But then again, we're focusing on the ones that where the benefits are given, not implied. Okay, so let's do that for step number three. we would have well let, let me write the equations in red so it would be the delta V the benefits okay, so we're starting we're using this pair right here so it'd be the benefits of D1 minus the benefits of do nothing and then we're gonna do the delta C which are gonna be the costs of D1 minus the costs of do nothing okay so let's plug in the values benefits of D1 800,000 and well the benefits of do nothing are zero Okay, so we don't have any costs for do nothing and we don't have any uh, additional benefits. So this would give us 800,000. Okay. And then the costs would be the costs of D1, which is, oh, here it is, 685,000. minus zero. Now since we're going to get the ratio later on, I'm not going to use a negative sign here. So I'm just going to put plug in the costs as they are. Even though you know that it's going to be a negative cash flow, since we're going to get the ratio, we don't want any negatives in the ratio. So therefore you just uh, get the absolute value. So you're going to do 685,000. Okay, so it's minus zero. So we uh, keep the same amount, 685,000.
thousand. Okay, so we're done with step number three. Step number four, determine the ratio for the benefit cost. In this particular problem, we don't have any disbenefits. If you had any disbenefits listed in your given cash flows in the given table, then you would subtract them. Okay, but we don't have any, so we're just going to divide the change in benefits by the change in the costs. Okay, so step number four would be the ratio. Okay, so in this case, it would be the 800,000 divided by the 685,000. Again, we want a positive ratio, so we keep this one as positive. We get the absolute value of the cost. This will give us 1.17. Okay, but now we must compare our answer to 1.0. If the answer that you got is greater than or equal to 1.0, you're going to eliminate alternative A, and uh, B is the survivor, okay, the the one with the highest equivalent cost, total equivalent cost. Otherwise, if it's less than 1.0, then A, or the one with the lowest total equivalent cost, will be the survivor. Okay, in our case, 1.17 is greater than 1.0. So for step number 5, we will eliminate do nothing and uh, D1 is a survivor. 